Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be talking about Ethereum. There's been a lot of exciting price movement recently in terms of Ethereum and Bitcoin. And so we're going to dive into that. And we're uh, going to be looking at the ratio of, of Ethereum, of Ether, with Bitcoin. So if you guys like the content, we, we try to provide more of a, a data science approach, uh, macro level picture to cryptocurrency. Um, so if you guys like this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel down below. I'd love to have you join for future videos. And also check out the Telegram channel here if you'd like to join and, and uh, you know comment on, on the video or, or just talk cryptocurrency with almost 3,000 other people. We're almost about to hit that milestone. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I made this graph a while, you know, a while back, and I like to update it for everyone every once in a while so that you, you can see if we're you know, more or less staying on track. Now, obviously, we've talked about this regression band in the past at, in the sense that there really isn't a whole lot of data to fit it to because Ethereum has only been through one market cycle. Um, but we do the best we can and we work with what we have. After a second market cycle, maybe we'll be able to get a better fit. But for now, I, you know, I fit it to, to these, three, um, these three regions primarily. You know, it might be in the future that I, I exclude this region, um, depending on... on what the you know what price does in, in the coming in the coming years, but for now this is the data that I'm using to get this primary regression band fit. Um, so if you follow say the fair valuation of Ethereum using this fit, then it would put us at a fair valuation you know of around a thousand dollars in 2023, which is where that you know prediction of of say a ten thousand dollar Ethereum comes from. Uh, which I've shown in prior videos because, you know, seeing a, a blow-off <coughs> speculative bubble where it's overvalued um, by about a thousand percent or so. Um, so seeing a speculative bubble off that up here. <coughs> now, the reason why I'm showing this chart again is, is, you know, there's been a lot of positive price movement in Ethereum in the last few days. But if I plot the difference, so this is the chart I showed a few days ago. I made a video saying, is Ethereum about to pop. So in a sense is are we about to see a a big move from ether? Okay? Now if I update this chart to show you what's happened since I made that video, this is what's happened. <laughs> you can see if I just toggle back and forth, while the move that Ethereum has seen has been has been good, um, we've we've continued moving upwards. It's nothing on on, on the macro scale. You know, this is just, uh, we're haggling over pennies here. Um, what is, you know, what's a few, a few dollars among friends when we're, when we're looking at, a, at the macro level picture and looking at these moves that we've seen in the past, um, you know, what we've seen in the last few days is relatively small. Um, so, again, keep your eyes on the bigger picture. If we go back to this chart, you know, I, I, I talked about is the ratio of Ethereum to Bitcoin, is it about to, to, to start moving up? And if you follow this channel, we talk extensively about the 20-week moving average. Now, the reason we talk about it, again, is because it's indicative of a bull market if Bitcoin can hold it as support. And Bitcoin is the market mover, and you need to respect that. And, you know, I think the sooner... You know, I think when, when people get into the cryptocurrency space, um, they tend to think that, you know, every coin uh, has its own, has its own, uh, you know, price action and, and everything. And, and maybe there's a few coins that you could, you can make the case for, but typically the coins that are kind of doing their own thing are relatively newer coins um, rather than, rather than coins that have been around for say five or six years. So most coins are pretty much pegged to Bitcoin. Um, and so we talked about this video in the sense of, you know, we've had, we kind of have this, this pattern occur throughout each, you know, sub-cycle in a sense. So you can imagine this is, um, this is the first sub-cycle of an overall Bitcoin market cycle, and this is the second sub-cycle of a Bitcoin market cycle. So the first sub-cycle, Ethereum-Bitcoin ratio skyrocketed once Bitcoin got above the 20-week moving average and held it as support. Um, and continued to stay above the 20-week moving average. And then it had again when Bitcoin reached its previous all-time high in the first quarter of 2017. Now, since then, um, you know, the ratio of Ethereum with Bitcoin has basically been bleeding out 
for for you know basically since this market cycle peak, um, we came back down, and then in January of 2018 we kind of saw our our, our double top, we, we see these double tops occur in both this first sub cycle and the second sub cycle. And you can see, um, you know, you can kind of see this basically this lengthening um, period where you see a, a bear market, um, an accumulation phase, and then we, we start moving again. So, what we're hoping to do is we're hoping that in, in this next bull market um, that we hope comes um, and that will take. Bitcoin to six figures in by 2023, approximately 2023, and we'll take Ethereum to five figures by 2023. You know, we, we hope that we see something similar to what happened in the last cycle. And while you can't make a ton of extrapolations from something that hasn't been around that long, we can at least say, okay, well, we know this is what was the catalyst for Ethereum in the past. Um, and again, one of them was Bitcoin getting above the 20-week moving average. And this is why the recent price action of Bitcoin is exciting, because we've again gotten above the 20-week. Now, many of you would note that we've gotten above the 20-week three times during this cycle. So this is the third time. Um, and it remains to be seen whether we're going to hold it as support. In the past two market cycles, going into the halving, we were either above the 20 week or we were holding it as support. And after the halvings, we continued to hold the 20 week moving average as support until, you know, the basic, you know, more or less until the speculative bubble popped. Um, so if, if history were to repeat itself in that sense, then we would expect Bitcoin to hold the 20 week moving average. Um, but, you know, th that still remains to be seen. Now, for, for those people who are, who are interested in a potential move for Ethereum, you know, we know that one of the checkboxes uh, that really we need to tick to, 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 to basically check off is is Bitcoin above the 20 week. We need Bitcoin to be above the 20 week in every move, in every drastic move that we've seen Ethereum make on Bitcoin. Bitcoin was above the 20 week. Here it was holding it as support or getting, you know, just getting above it when it saw this move. And at this point, you know, it was well, it was, it was still about the 20 week moving average and getting to its prior all time high. So we need to see that occur. Now, a lot of people are saying, I've gotten a lot of people that have said, well, why has the Ethereum ratio with Bitcoin not moved up yet? And, and we've spoken at length about this on the channel. You know, you want to see weekly candles, not daily candles are, are pretty much irrelevant. We need to see it actually confirm that we're staying above the 20 week moving average. Uh, because everything's watching Bitcoin, you know, if, if Bitcoin is just, say, faking everyone out and it's going to come straight back down, then, you know, other coins are going to bleed. If Bitcoin were to drop from here and then go below the 20-week moving average, the Ethereum-Bitcoin ratio would drop further. So not only would Ethereum lose value with respect to fiat, but it would also lose, lose value with respect to Bitcoin. Um, so we want to continue to see, to see that um, move up. Now, I wanted to remind you, this is one of the graphs that shows what Ethereum does when Bitcoin is either above the 20 week or below the 20 week. So one of the things you can note is that when Bitcoin is below the 20 week, and this is the, the price of Ethereum um, in US dollars, you can see that when, when Bitcoin is below the 20 week, the value of Ethereum tends to drop each each time. So if you had, if you had, um, exited say your your position in ethereum when bitcoin got below the 20 week and then you re-entered it so far every time that would have occurred you would have you would have been getting ether for cheaper if you had done that um, obviously that doesn't mean it's going to happen again but um, since since inception that has been the case and this time while it did come close to to overtaking it um, it was still it was still slightly uh, slightly below so the ratio is still slightly below um, and but we'll, but really we need to you know we'll, we'll need to really wait for full confirmation of that uh, when the weekly candles close in a few days but one of the things you can note clearly is that when you know more or less when bitcoin's below the 20 week ethereum's losing value when bitcoin is above the 20 week again ethereum is gaining value and this is in with respect to fiat so you can see here it gains you know uh completely unbelievable um, amount. Uh, the ROI was, you know, significant, going from 10 to the zero up to 
uh, 10 cubed, which is 1,000, so we're looking at 1,000x ROI in the span of a couple years. Uh, you know, Ethereum has seen a pretty, a pretty incredible history here. And then last time, or sorry, I should say in 2019, when Bitcoin got above the 20 week, Ethereum also saw a move up. Now, eventually it did come with a move down, but the thesis is that when Bitcoin gets above the 20 week moving average, this is when Ethereum, you know, has, this, has the chance to shine. Because when it's below it, we know that Ethereum isn't going to really be doing a whole lot if you just measure it from when it went, from when it dropped below to then when it got back to the 20 week. If you just take those two price points, I mean, clearly you can see in this case, Ethereum dropped and then went back up, but ultimately it didn't really do a whole lot when Bitcoin was below the 20 week. Um, but in every case, once Bitcoin gets above the 20 week, the value of Ethereum tends to start rising. Uh, and it doesn't always happen immediately. I mean, you can see here it, it went down at first even. Um, sometimes it, it takes it a while before it really gets going. And sometimes it, it moves up uh, quicker than others. You can see that we've just now printed our, you know, our first little data point here that's showing Bitcoin getting above the 20 week and now this is what the price of Ethereum is. So the price of Ethereum from here will just fully be dictated, in my opinion, this is not financial advice, but in my opinion the price of Ethereum will be fully dictated on whether Bitcoin can hold the 20 week moving average um, or either continue moving above it. And if it continues to stay above the 20 week um, whether it's either moving above it or, you know, just basically staying humdrum, then I am going to become uh, very bullish on Ethereum here in, in a short while because this is when Ethereum tends to shine during its, its sub-cycles. Um, this is the chart of Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin, when Bitcoin is either above the 20-week moving average or below it. So here it paints a different picture to, to, to a small degree. So. When Bitcoin is below the 20 week, you can see the, the ratio of Ethereum to Bitcoin bleeding significantly. This is typically speaking, it bleeds. It bled here, it bled here, it bled here, and it did bleed here. So it, it looks, if you, if you take this late last data point um, uh, where we were above the 20 week and then look to see where we are coming back to it, it did lose a small amount of, of value with respect to Bitcoin, but it's not really that significant. Um, but again, this is, you know, the, the, the idea here that I have with the 20 week, it's not like it, it's always going to be a, the perfect indicator. I mean, if you, you know, if you go through, so I, I went through grad school in engineering and, and one of the things you know is any model, basically every model is wrong in a sense. I mean, it can give you information that gets you closer to the truth, but ultimately every model is wrong. And this is a bit of a stretch to compare, say, uh, you know, a model with, with different parameters and, and whatnot in it, you know, maybe describing something to just looking at, say, price price action for, for a cryptocurrency, but still, um, everything has its risks associated with it, but regardless, um, it's still held true even if just barely. Um, now, does the opposite hold true? Does Ethereum always pump when Bitcoin is above the 20 week? It does not always. Um, I mean, first, you can see here that we saw it drop down. And this is why I talk extensively about you want to see weekly candles, not daily. Each point here represents a day. So the first week or so after Bitcoin got above the 20 week moving average back in 2015, the valuation of Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin was going down. It wasn't until, you know, weeks and months after that that it really started moving up. Um, so, you, you know, you need to, you need to consider that. And, and ultimately, this was when Bitcoin got above it, and then it was holding it as support later on. And this is what ultimately fueled this amazing move that Ethereum saw, was the establishment of a bull market. The establishment that, okay, Bitcoin is back, you know, cryptocurrency is back, and therefore, the top cryptocurrencies, Ethereum being one of them, probably, you know, the most utilized cryptocurrency in the space that actually has real world utility. I mean, there's a lot of others too, but Ethereum is definitely the front runner in terms of real world utility. And I don't really think you can make a, a strong case otherwise. Now there's a lot of coins that are gonna try to challenge Ethereum and we'll see how that goes. But Ethereum has, you know, an incredible head start. It's got a ton of developers. It's carved out a niche already in decentralized finance. Um, it has a lot going for it. So Ethereum, for me, is, is definitely a, a, a top pick, in a sense, in terms of a coin that I would want to have in my portfolio. So while I don't always hold all other coins, 
I always hold Bitcoin and I always hold Ethereum, but I'll, I'll swing trade sometimes in Ethereum to try to maximize the amount of, theory, of Ethereum I have based on, on these indicators of the 20 week moving average. And if you want more information, like if you like this content and you, and you think you would be, you, you know, you could benefit um, through say managing your own portfolio by, by you know, following these models more closely and, and getting access to premium content that I would encourage you to check out the Patreon channel here. Um, you know, you, you'll get access if you do the middle tier, which is $50 a month, you'll get access to a weekly report that I write, which will give you the risk associated with investing in Ethereum that week, as, as long as, as well as you'll have, you'll see historical risk factors. Also, you'll get the same thing for Bitcoin and Litecoin if you're invested in those coins. Um, and you'll get a lot, a lot of other things too in, ter in terms of a private Telegram group that you can join and, and really kind of filters out the noise from the public group. I mean, I, I really like the public group. There's almost 3,000 members, but the nice thing about the private group is that there's only around 110 members. So the, the conversation is more focused um, uh, when, we, when we do talk about this stuff. So I think it's, I think it's worth checking out. Uh, so if you guys want to check it out, uh, now's the best time to check it out because it's the, you know, it's the, it's the beginning of the month and that's when they, they do their billing. So, um, uh, please check that out if you want to support the channel and you, and you think that, uh, getting access to a premium report and, um, some private patron only videos would, would be beneficial to you then, then check that out. Um, so again, what we're ultimately looking for, right, is, is that 20 week moving average. So in this cycle, you can see the valuation went down. But ultimately, the trend was up over the next two years because we were holding the 20 week as support. Now, over here in 2020, we went up. Okay, so, so far, if you look at when Ethereum was either above the 20 week moving average or below the 20 week moving average, you will note that the, 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 the thesis that you know, I put forth holds up almost all the time. The only time in the history that it has not held up is here. And that is when Bitcoin went above the 20 week moving average, but the valuation of Ethereum to Bitcoin continued to bleed. Okay, so there is a case where it did not happen. We've talked about this in a prior video. Um, you know, the, the argument in a sense is while well, we're still in a bear market and it, it, was, it was maybe a premature run, um, you know, you could obviously make up a lot of different cases as to as to what was going on in this in this area, but ultimately, I, I think primarily from from where I'm looking at the data, I think there's a lot of evidence to say that uh, because of of the lengthening cycle theory, that the bear market and accumulation phase was still in full full effect, and and that's ultimately why Ethereum uh, was bleeding with respect to Bitcoin. Now, remember, it's not like you were losing money in terms of fiat if you were holding Ethereum during this time, because Remember, the the value was actually going up. Of you know, the value of your of your ether in in fiat was was improving during this time, more or less. I mean, if you take it from here and cut it off here, it improved. Um, it did go up, and then it, it, it did come back down, but ultimately it, it was improving um, uh, during that time period. So, if you are you know if your if your primary goal is to just hold ether, then you're still seeing a good return even if you're not trading against Bitcoin. The, the idea is if you were tra trading it against Bitcoin during this time, the valuation would have decreased when we were above the 20 week moving average. So there's always a risk associated um, in these trades. But what we, what we note is that to see these moves that we've seen in the past, we were above the 20 week. So we're just going above the 20 week now. You can see that going into the 20 week, we've actually decreased our valuation with respect to Bitcoin which is similar to what we did over here back in 20, 2015, 2016. So moving forward, what we're looking for is Bitcoin to either stay above the 20 week moving average or continue to hold it as support. And if we can do those two things, then I think Ethereum is, is going to have, uh, uh, to see some, to see some uh, gains uh, if, if, we can, if Bitcoin can manage to, to hold that position. Now, um, I wanted to show you guys uh, a couple more things. Uh, so first, let's look at uh, trading. You know, like let's look at some of the the trading view stuff. Um, so here you can see the weekly indicator or the weekly chart for Ethereum Bitcoin. So again, this March second, if you zoom in um, to March second, here this was when Bitcoin broke the 20-week moving average. 
So if you look here, um, March 2nd, this was when Bitcoin broke it, so then this would have been the value of Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin at the time that it broke. So it would have been around 0 0.0253, so this would have been the following week. Um, and then currently the valuation is around 0 0.0242. So currently it is, like I mentioned, it is um, slightly below where it was when the 20 week broke. Um, and then again, for those who are new to the channel, the reason why we put so much emphasis on the 20 week moving average is because during a bull market, this is where Bitcoin finds support. And during a bear market, this is where Bitcoin finds resistance. And we've noted that whenever Bitcoin gets above the 20 week, it really starts to move uh, relatively quickly. And whenever it drops below the 20 week, it really drops. I mean, significantly here it dropped straight to the 100 week moving average, which was um, a 22% drop. And then the second time we broke the 20 week, uh, we dropped all the way down to the 200 week moving average, which was a 34% drop. And if you take the wick of that, if you look to see where the wick came, it was actually a 53% drop. So breaking the 20 week is not a good thing for Bitcoin. And, and holding it as support is, is what we want to see. And you can see that going into the prior halving, uh, we, were, we were holding, this is the halving, the yellow line. We were holding it as support, you can see. And even during the, the cycle before, um, Bitcoin was holding that 20 week moving average as support going into the halving. So if we can continue to hold it as support, then I think Ethereum uh, is going to see uh, a move in the coming days, coming weeks, um, where it's going to rise with respect to fiat and it'll rise with respect to Bitcoin. Uh, the only caveat here, obviously, is if, if, is if um, Bitcoin drops below the 20 week, then we would expect the valuation of Ethereum with respect to fiat and Bitcoin to, to, to go down. So that, that's the caveat. So that's, that's the primary thing to watch out for. As I've mentioned about 457 times in this video, um, sorry for repeating myself over and over and over, but this is, you know, this is the primary point. This is the thesis that we're going with. Um, so let's, let's see how it plays out. And remember, you know, again, there was that one time where during the bear market of, you know, and, and say slash accumulation phases um, in 2019, that when Bitcoin went above the 20 week, Ethereum with respect to Bitcoin did bleed. Um, but we noted that in order for Ethereum to see these types of moves, that Bitcoin had to have been above the 20 week moving average for that to occur. So, you know, take the risk. Obviously, investing in cryptocurrency is a risky business. Uh, you know, there's no such thing as a sure thing. Anything is possible. I would just say if you're okay with the risk, at least that we're, we're at least we're checking off our checkbox that Bitcoin is above the 20 week right now. So at least um, Ethereum has some room to grow if we can if we can hold that level. Uh, so finally, if you again, if you guys like the content, I do try to provide a different approach than most people. So please subscribe to the channel, uh, turn your notifications on by clicking the bell icon, join the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And for those who want to join Patreon and uh, get access to exclusive content, then check that out. It's just patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. You can see I have three different tiers. Um, most people choose the, the middle tier because you get everything with this tier. We also get access to the private chat room and a Google Sheets document that I try to keep updated every week with updated risk levels and, and valuations of, of the total cryptocurrency market cap, as well as a few other things. So um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment down below. Give me your thoughts on, on what, what do you think about the video. Uh, you can tell me, stop repeating the same thing 457 times and maybe I'll try, but uh, just let me know. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.